Ωραία, θα αρχί... ας αρχίσουμε εμείς. <coughs> so, uh, my presentation is about um, a scalable platform for, uh, for um, uh, heavy traffic uh, workloads uh, in the uh, public sector. Uh, I'm Harry Tavdaris. I will say a few words about me. Uh, I am the managing director in the enterprise digital of uh, PwC, which is the, uh, the software house uh, of, uh, of PwC. So I'm leading a team of uh, very capable uh, engineers, developers, testers, architects, and business analysts. Um, and uh, before that, I was the uh, NTO, the national technology officer in, uh, in Microsoft for uh, Greece, Cyprus, and Malta. And before that, I was the leader of the uh, General Secretariat of Information Systems, which is the organization inside the Ministry of, uh, of Finance, uh, owning all the uh, application for the tax, customs, public finance, taxes, ECs, and all this kind of stuff. And that was the beginning of my engagement in public sector. And this is, let's say, the topic that I will focus on. So working with um, the public sector uh, at, uh, at the beginning, let's say, of, of my engagement, uh, and I am sure that you will share the same experience as a, from the citizen point of view. <clears throat> uh, the systems that the public sector builds and the services that uh, the public sector entities deliver to the citizens usually have the same, let's say, uh, uh, issues, fails, and drawbacks. Typically, scalability. It's a very common scenario that the system is down, I cannot log in, I cannot submit the document. The UI is usually very poor, although It has been significantly improved over the last year. There are some common graphic uh, guidelines. Uh, all the quality attributes, I would say, of, this kind of, of, this, uh, of these types of systems are, are not very well, let's say, thought during the design uh, uh, phase of this uh, system. We will focus on the, on the scalability in, in this presentation. One of the reasons why these things happen is because, of course, they don't have the skills. Maybe they don't have the systems. They use old-fashioned systems. Uh, and they focus, this is also another uh, uh, concern for them, is they focus on the, on the business logic of the systems. And the test process of the systems is not as it should be. So they do not stress the systems. They just test the business logic. So they focus that the systems do what it has to do. It calculates, for example, the tax with the correct formula. It performs according to the legal framework. But all the other quality attributes are not, uh, let's say, uh, assessed and reviewed and examined during the, 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 the implementation and the, the deployment of the system. Uh, when we started uh, building this, um, this platform, uh, the request was for the first pass. The platform that I will talk about is about the passes. The tourism pass, Samos pass, market pass, power pass, all these uh, uh, passes that were delivered by uh, the government were built on this platform. As a number, through this platform that I will show, Uh, we distributed about 2 billion euros. That was the money, roughly, that were, let's say, uh, shared through this platform. And another thing that I would like to say is that we built this platform not only uh, inside PwC, but uh, as a PwC, we are a very open company. We have a lot of other companies that we work with. So we partner with... Uh, a great team of engineers from Patra, the Sparkworks uh, team. And this is an invitation to you that if you, have, if you are a, a group of very talented and <clears throat> passionate uh, engineers, ping us and maybe uh, we can work together in a, in a project in the future. 
So when we started building this platform in the first, let's say, pass, we, have, we had some architectural decisions. There is a team of architects deciding what we will build and where we will build it. Uh, the first is uh, that we will use Azure. Azure because the GSIS, the G Cloud, let's say, owner, or the, the G Cloud of the government uses as a public cloud infrastructure Azure. So we were, let's say, uh, constrained to use Azure. Another decision, the first decision is to use Mongo. Why Mongo? Because we had significant experience in Mongo. From previous projects, we had used Mongo and it was super scalable. Azure and Mongo, they are offered through the Cosmos DB Mongo API. Now, this is a very important detail. Azure Cosmos uh, DB Mongo API, it's not Mongo. It's a Mongo API. Another decision is what kind of tier we will use, will we use on the Cosmos uh, DB Mongo API. And uh, an obvious, let's say, uh, decision was serverless. When you hear serverless, and these are the statement from the documentation of, uh, of Azure, is that serverless containers can serve thousands of requests per second with no minimum charge and no capacity planning. Generally, when you say serverless, you imply I just pay and I don't care. I don't have to care, let's say, about, let's say, scaling, performance, these kind of things. All these things are managed. Which was not the case. The case was, was done during the second day of the fuel pass. Cosmos DB was, was returning Azure Cosmos DB request rate to large. In the documentation below, it was also writing, developing, testing, prototyping. So one lesson learned. Cosmos DB serverless, it is not what it means. It's not something that you can buy and scale automatically. Actually, all the other statements are not true. The last one is true. It's for development, testing, prototyping. Azure Cosmos DB serverless does not scale unless you use SARTs. We could not use SARTs for technical reasons. We have multiple unique keys and SART is not supported. So we have to fall back and set up infrastructure as a MongoDB on infrastructure as a service on our, let's say, VMs and manage these uh, <coughs> VMs by ourselves. This is the first, let's say, um, uh, lesson learned from this journey, from this um, uh, service. The second uh, 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 challenge that we faced was the application services versus container apps. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Azure, uh, let's say, uh, application services layer. The standard back then was the application services. The Kubernetes was offered back then, but Kubernetes is in the 90, 95% of the cases is an overkill and it's very complicated to set up, manage, deploy and generally use it. And it was definitely an overkill for our application because okay, the business logic was very simple. We didn't have to use, let's say, uh, microservices with different pods and these kind of things. Everything, the, the, the business logic was dead simple. So uh, testing, uh, stress testing the, the, the app services, we found that was, they were not able to, to scale and handle more than 1,000 requests uh, per second. The secret here is that App services at the beginning was a glorified IIS, that was app services behind the scenes. And back then, the container apps was introduced maybe a month or two months ago. So it was a very fresh uh, service, a very fresh offering uh, from the Azure. 
and it was not mature and the complementary capabilities of the container apps were not able, let's say, to support our business requirements. For example, the container apps were not supporting NAT gateway. You need NAT gateway to go through one IP and to hit an external uh, dependency, another web, ser web service, for example, for the authentication or for uh, retrieving data about uh, families or about the available income, these kind of things. So instead of doing this, we used the Azure firewall to uh, force specific outbound addresses. Azure firewall was not meant to be used as a NAT gateway, so we have NAT port exhaustion, and then we have to uh, uh, assign multiple uh, public IPs to increase the available ports. Having said all this, we reached a point where we finalized our architecture, and this is uh, the architecture which uh, delivered all the passes. What I want to say is that, okay, it's a complicated architecture with all the security elements, with the external, let's say, um, uh, interfaces, with the banks, that, with the files that we send through the secure FTP, uh, the interfaces uh, with the GSIS is somewhere, uh, the, the mail that we use, the AWS external service, uh, the asynchronous uh, serverless, uh, the queue and the serverless for the verification of the, um, uh, of the SMS telephone number and uh, your mail. But all the passes, and that's the secret of, the, of this, let's say, uh, uh, platform, is that all the passes were delivered through this platform. And what you have to do, that was the smart design of our platform, what you have to do in order to build another pass and another, let's say, yes, give another business logic, is you have to replicate the container apps layer and the app subnet layer. If you read this layer, the acronyms is the VNP is market pass, the PP is power pass, the FP is... Uh, Fuel pass and the ESP is the area and Samos pass. So this tapos the container and the app subnet, uh, the app subnet uh, tapos actually deliver the business service for all these different uh, passes. So if you want to add tomorrow another pass, you just have to implement these two things and all the other infrastructure is ready and optimized to serve at the very high, uh, very high traffics. Uh, I have prepared some, let's say, graphs from you that show the traffic that we were able to, to serve. The record is one million transactions, citizen transactions per day, which is a kind of a record for the, for the systems of, uh, of the Greek government. And this record is, uh, is bounded by the performance of the external dependencies. And what I, what I mean by this is that we have to hit the web services of other systems of the government, the authentication web service, web service about your income, web service about your family, and we were bound by the performance of these web services. If you let this platform to scale freely, we can, uh, let's say, achieve much, much higher uh, performances. That was uh, my uh, presentation, the short uh, quickie. Uh, I am happy to answer your questions, or I will be at the booth of uh, PwC to discuss uh, about it. Thank you very much.